Good evening, good evening. It is Wiser Wednesday time from the cockpit of our car. It, it is very exciting for me to talk about this topic tonight. We're going to be talking about the importance of seasons. It's so much fun to come in and do these trainings because in a very short period of time, we can cover a topic that is can be absolutely transformational for you. And you just never know when God's going to speak something into your life that can change your everything. And I've learned that over the years of my own life. I never know when I'm listening to a song or if I'm in a, a church service or sometimes it's just in a, in a time of prayer that something will happen. And in those moments, things can drop in your life and they can be absolutely transformative for you. And tonight is no exception. So uh, I'm really looking forward to sharing in the next few moments with you guys. All right, here's what I want you to do. If you're taking notes tonight, and I know some of you are, I know Sill's on here, uh, write down in the notes or type in the comments, Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 through 21. Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 through 21. And here's what I want you to understand about seasons in your life. And, and I'm going to cover, as we talk about this tonight, I want you to think about seasons in your own life, seasons in your own life. I want you to think of seasons in your family and friend's life, and then I want you to think about seasons in other people's lives around you, because here is the truth that I want you to understand. Every one of us, every one of us, without exception, is in a different season in their life right now. We are all going through different seasons. Some are going through a challenging season. Some are going through a growth season. Some are going through a season of joy and harvest. Different seasons are, are what goes on in our life, and God created this from the beginning, seed time and harvest. Seasons are the way God makes things work, and it is important in our life to understand the season that we're in, understand the seasons that our family is in, that our friends are in, and the people that are around us, because everyone is in a different season, and it can be absolutely critical when you talk about how you interact with people. So, Daniel 2, 20 through 21, I'm going to read it for you here. Here's what Daniel said. Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Listen to this. Wisdom and power are his. About life-wise, we're all about Wiser Wednesday, getting wiser on Wednesday. Wisdom and power are his or belong to him. He changes, God changes, times and seasons. God is in charge, watch this, and he changes times and seasons. Listen to this. He sets up kings and he deposes kings. And then watch this next sentence. And he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. <laughs> all about all life wise here on Wiser Wednesday. We're all about wisdom, correct? Absolutely. So God, first we see that it, uh, God is wisdom and power belong to him. So wisdom belongs to the Lord. Power belongs to the Lord. And in the last sentence, we see God gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Man, that's amazing. So we've got wisdom on the front end, wisdom on the back end. But in the middle, we see that God changes seasons and times. He sets kings up. He deposes them. So what this tells us is wisdom belongs to God. Power belongs to God. But also, God is in charge of times and and seasons, and we're all in those seasons. John Maxwell, the Christian leadership author, talks about that in people's lives, that there's a there are seasons of change, and there are things that happen in people's lives that allow them or force them to go through seasons of change, and there are four of these. So make sure we put these in the notes, seasons of change, and they're vitally, vitally important, and I'm going to share with you guys why. All right, so here's what John Maxwell says, and I completely agree with him, by the way. Four reasons and four seasons that people will change in. Are you ready? Here's the first one. People will change when they hurt enough and they have to. People will change in a season. If they're going through a season of pain, they are willing to change when they hurt enough and when they have to. Okay, that's the first one. The second season of change, the reason that people will change is this, when they see enough and they are inspired to, 
people will change the season that they're in when they see enough and they are inspired by what they see, okay? That's the second season and the reason that people will change. Here's the third season and the reason. Are you ready? When they learn enough and they want to. When they learn enough and they want to. It's powerful stuff right here. I'm going to go back and cover each one of these in a moment. And here's the fourth reason and the seasons that will force people or give people the opportunity to change. Here's number four. When they receive enough and they are able to change. When they receive enough and they are able to change. And I'm going to unpack these for you. Guys, I'm telling you, when we talk about, I'm going to tell you why this is so important. Because when you recognize that people are in seasons and they need to make a change, these are the reasons they will bring about a change. And I'm going to show you how it will impact your personal life the life of your family and friends, and also people that you may be in business in or people that are outside of your circle, okay? Vitally critical. This is a critical leadership moment. I really want you to get, down, get this down on the inside of you. So the first reason that people change in the season, and we'll unpack it, is when they hurt enough and they have to change. And so here's my question. When people need to change because they're in a, so much pain, the situations in their life, the pressure that they're under, relational pressure, physical pressure, financial pressure, there's so much pain in their life, they're forced to make a change. And here's the question that I have when people are in those seasons, and maybe this will help you as you're dealing with them. Here's the question. Are you ready to change? Are you ready to change? Have you hurt enough? Are you in enough pain? Are you willing to do something in your life right now that you're willing to change? Are you ready? Here's another way that I like to say it. And you guys put this in the notes. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Have you had enough? Have you, have you lost your money again and you need to start all over? Are you dealing with relationship challenges again and, you, and you're going around this mountain again? Are you in enough pain in your life that you're really willing to change? Physically, maybe you've gone to the doctor and you're in pain and physically and, and they're, they're saying, listen, you've got to lose weight or you, you need to get on supplements, you, you know, whatever the situation is. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Does it hurt enough that you're willing to make the necessary changes in your life? That's the first thing. Here's the second thing. People are willing to change when they see enough and they're inspired to. They get excited. Rob, your timing couldn't have been better. Rob just posted something that showed he and Ronnie moving up to the next level and the blessing that's going on in their life. That is phenomenal. And that is inspiring. And when you begin to inspire people, you begin to inspire people to want to change. People are willing to make a change because they're, inspi they're inspired. They're excited. And here's a question that I have here. Are you ready for this? Are you, here's the question you ask people that are in this season. Are you providing enough information or, and inspiration, or can you point people that are willing to change to someone that will inspire them? Are you, as a friend, family, spouse, parent, business leader, are you providing inspiration, or can you point those people that are ready for that change to those who can inspire them? It's a great question. Here's the third thing I want you to look at. People are willing to change when they learn enough and they want to change. People are willing to change when they learn enough and they want to. One of the things that I love about LifeWise, our lead academy, I love about our Wednesday nights, is I'm trying to provide you information. And the reason I'm trying to provide you this information, and I believe it's coming from the Lord, is that he wants us to change. And so we're providing you information. Remember, knowledge Good information plus wisdom, the consistent application of knowledge, leads us to success. So what we're trying to do is provide you good information. I am literally spending my life, I spent eight hours teaching a class today of 43 students, uh, police officer students. I spent eight hours today, and we're in there working, and we're providing them good information so that they can bring about positive changes in their life and be good leaders. The same thing I'm doing right now to you guys. 
I'm trying to, so I love this topic. I'm trying to get this to you so that you can learn enough that will allow you then to make good decisions, to make good decisions and begin to move forward. You've got good information. You've got good information. It's time to move. And here's the question, Not, or here's the, here's the response I want you to see here. Knowledge is powerful. Knowledge is powerful, and it can motivate us to move. Knowledge, when you get this revelation, when some of you have seen this before, God has spoken to you through Scripture, or maybe you've heard someone speak, and, and, and God has just touched your heart in the, the moment. The Holy Spirit has moved and touched you in the moment. Now you're like, now I have the information I need. Now I'm ready to move. Now I have direction. Now I know what the Lord is saying to me, and I'm ready to move. Knowledge is powerful, and it can motivate us. It can help us to move. And when people learn enough, then they finally get to the place where I'm ready to move. And here's the fourth thing. When people are ready to change in these seasons in their life, are you ready? When they receive enough. When they receive enough, and then they are able to. Here's what goes underneath that. Their cup is full. They have gas in their tank, and it's time to get stepping. <laughs> I love that. When they receive enough and they are able to move. See, that is powerful, extremely powerful to me. Because now when you have poured into the life of people, their cup is full. They have gas in their tank, and they are ready to get stepping. They are ready to drive. And listen, here, here is, I just love, I don't, I'm about to jump all over myself here. I'm so excited. These are the times that people are really willing to change. Those four areas, and you need to go back and look at it again. Rob just said that, and I agree with you. You need to write this down, guys, and you need to understand how this works. So what do you need? There's three things that you need to to help people as they navigate through the season. So here's the first thing that I need you to understand. You need to understand the season that you're in. You need to understand the season that some of your family members are in. You need to understand the season that your friends are in. But you also need to understand the seasons of those that are around you in your circle. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unpack this for you. Number one, you ready? You need discernment to help people assess what season they're in and identify that season. You need discernment to help people assess and identify the season that they are in. See, that is critical. When I'm dealing with someone or I'm talking with someone, you need to understand something. And, and please get this right now. All right, Here, here's number two, and this is going to help with number one. You can't change anyone. They must choose. See, when you identify the season that someone's in, they have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. They have to have enough knowledge to make a decision. They have to be inspired enough. You can only control so much of that. Ultimately, it comes down to that person choosing to go forward. Our job as leaders, our job in life is to provide people good information. It is to provide people inspiration, which we hope in turn will turn to, turn to motivation. I'm going to say that again. Our job is to provide people information that we hope will turn into to motivation and help them begin to move forward. That, that's what we do, but, but they have to make the decision, right? They have to choose to accept, to be inspired, and then to take those steps. And here's number three. Here's what we need to do. Your job, my job, with myself, with my family, with my friends, and with those in my circle, here it is. My job is to provide, number one, encouragement. My job is to provide them encouragement, help them identify the season that they're in, and then encourage them. Do you know how amazing it is to be able to talk to people and help them identify their season and then point them in the right direction? You know, some people right now in your life are struggling, and they don't know why. They don't recognize the season that they're in. And when you're able to come alongside them and say, hey, you know, uh, what's going on in your life? Well, I'm struggling in this area or the other. You can pull these notes out and say, hey, you know, you might be in a season of, of challenges. Are you, are you hurting right now? Yeah, I'm having some relationship out 
challenges or financial challenges, well, you can help them identify what that pain is and then simply ask them this question. Are you ready to change? Does it hurt enough? Do you see the power of this? What about your children? Maybe you have a child or, or a spouse that's going through some significant a significant season of hurt, you can come to them and say, hey, let's identify the season that you're in. Because here's the beauty of seasons. They change. So this season that you're in right now is not going to last forever. But are you willing to change? Are you willing to move forward from what this season is trying to help you see? Oh, it's a powerful thought. So the first thing we need to do is provide them encouragement. The second thing we need to do is give them opportunity. When anyone is in a season of change, regardless of the season, they're looking for whatever their next step is. Guys, for some of you right now, the amazing opportunity that we have going on in this company, now is the time for people. You can provide them a season. If they're looking to better their health, if they're looking to make some extra money, if they're, I talked to a guy this week, if they're looking to expand their ministry and they're looking for a vehicle to help them, we have that. And so some of these people need encouragement. Some of them are looking for the right opportunity. You may have that. You may have that for them. But it comes when you help them recognize the season that they're in. And regardless, now check this out. You're not going to hear this from everybody. Regardless of whether the opportunity is with us as an organization or your job is simply to minister to them, you do the right thing. You minister to them first. If God's calling them to be a part of what we're doing, fantastic. You be his hands and feet regardless of what's going on there. Do you hear me? And everyone on the corporate team would agree with that. We are to be Jesus' hands and feet. That's what we are called to do, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to be encouraging to them. We're going to provide them an opportunity. In other words, we're going to help them with whatever their next step is, whatever that is. The third thing we're going to do is provide them direction. Provide them direction. Which way should they go? Amen? Which way should I be moving? What are my next steps? Well, this is where we come in beside them and we help them navigate those next steps. Man, guys, I am so thankful in my life. I have Rob and Sylvie and Greg and James and the whole team that we've got this amazing team that I have people there that love me just for me, that are there for me just for me, not because what I can do for them, just because they love me and I love them. And I'm just so glad that they're in my life, and I'm so glad and so thankful that, that I get to be in their life and, and they're in my life. And, and we just love each other. That's what we do, and we're here for each other. And that's what we need in life. And, and you've got people in your life that are looking for, what do I do next? Somebody help me. Give me information. Well, God may have placed you in their path right now to help them identify their season and then to help navigate whatever the next steps are. That is a powerful thought. That is a powerful thought. You might say to them, hey, are you looking for some personal development? We can help you with that. Hey, are you looking for a church? Hey, are you looking for what is it that they need? Guys, what are we're hope brokers. That's, that's what we are. We're hope brokers. We are people that bring hope into desperate situations. We are people that provide life and support for people that are in desperate situations. It's what we are called to do. That is our label. Do that. Be that. <laughs> It's just what we're called to do and be. So number one, we provide encouragement. Number two, we provide an opportunity for them. We, we help them with a pathway. Number three, we provide them direction. And here's number four, and I think it's the most important one. We pray for them. We pray for them. We pray for them. Why? Guys, listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> I can't fix anybody. Guys, I can't even fix myself. But I know a guy. You know, we serve an amazing God. And when you encounter people that are going through a challenging season in their life, you know, I want you to listen to what's going on. I want you to help them identify the season that they're in. I want you to help maybe guide them and give them some direction and a pathway for whatever their need is. Listen to me. I don't want you to sell them something first. That can come later. You need to help them. You need to help them. God will bring the blessing. You help people. If they need if they need supplements, fantastic. We got the best in the world. Help them. If they need a way, a way to make money, we couldn't be any better than what we've got. But sometimes they're just broken and hurting, and they need somebody to listen to them. 
be his hands and feet. God will bring that blessing. God will bring that blessing. He has dropped you into their situation to be his hands and feet. And you know a guy that can help them. And so you just tell them, you know what? I'm going to pray. Let me pray for you. Pray right there in the moment if they'll let you. But definitely continue to pray for them and follow up with them. I think that is so powerful. So these seasons are critical. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this tonight. Sorry, guys. I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> You know, I'm not going to apologize. I'm glad I'm a little bit excited. All right, Ecclesiastes 3. I'm not going to read all of it, but I want to talk here about seasons for a moment. Ecclesiastes 3. There is an appointed time for everything. There is a time for every matter under heaven. There's a time to give birth and a time to die. There's a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time to tear down, and there's a time to build up. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Wow. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones up, a time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. There's a time to search and a time to give up is lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. There's a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time for war and a time for peace. For everything, there is a season. Listen, I'm going to close. You're surrounded by people right now, including yourself, that are going through seasons. Pray about the season that they're in. Look and analyze the season that they're in. Step into that situation and help them navigate through a season. God could be preparing you to be his hands and feet to help somebody navigate forward. You are equipped. You are called. Follow these steps. Recognize the people that you're trying to help grow in their business, people that you're trying to help in in different areas of their life or going through a season. Take time to listen. Help them navigate. And then watch the amazing things that God will do. And guys, let me tell you something. That is living life wise.